Hello everyone, this is the CRT Productions here, and this is the Acer Aspire 3000. Now, I would tell you that this isn't just any old Acer Aspire 3000, but it kind of is. A while back, I began to wonder, what is the lowest in old hardware that can run Windows 10? Well, my first thought was my Sony Vio hair dryer from 2005 with a 3.2 GHz mobile Pentium 4. What I quickly learned, however, was that there are no mobile Pentium 4 processors that can run Windows 10 because of a technology called NXBit. This is basically a small bit of segregated memory on the processor designed to prevent buffer overflows, and it was introduced with AMD Opteron server processors in 2003. All versions of Windows since Windows 8 require NXBit, and there were never any mobile Pentium 4 processors that supported it. In 2004, AMD released the first line of mobile, Simpron, and Athlon processors to implement NXBit, which is where this Acer Aspire comes into play. This is the Acer Aspire 3002 LCI, a budget notebook from 2005. The original specifications were an AMD Simpron 2800 Plus processor, a very, very dim 15-inch XGA display, 40GB hard disk, and 512MB of DDR1 RAM. What makes this laptop special is that it runs on the Socket 754 platform, which uses the earliest line of Simpron processors. The one that was originally in this laptop was the second worst overall in the line of Simprons, so I had to track down the 2600 Plus, which has a slightly lower clock speed, to have the worst one. But while I was doing my upgrades, I didn't just stop at the processor. This laptop came with 1GB of RAM when I bought it, which is the minimum requirement for Windows 10 and plenty bad enough in my opinion. But I also wanted to find the slowest hard disk available that has enough storage capacity to install Windows 10. And I came up with this beautiful old IBM Travelstar 4200 RPM drive from 2002. This is by far the biggest limiting factor in the system as you will see when I compare it later to Linux on an SSD. But for now, let's get on to some testing. The first thing I wanted to do with this was run a benchmark. User benchmark to be exact. Mostly because it's easy. I ran the benchmark side by side with uh, an also relatively old laptop from 2008. I did this to give an idea to those who may not be familiar with user benchmark, an idea of what the program is supposed to look like on any system that isn't running the worst possible components. User Benchmark is unable to test the GPU at all due to it being an SIS Mirage 2 from 2003, which only supports up to DirectX 8.1. One requirement of Windows 10 is DirectX 9 support, but uh, they installed on this thing, so. Alright, we got some results. Let's see what we got here. Missing GPU and SSD. Alright, let's see. Wish I could use my little scroll buttons, but... Let's see. Hmm. Oh boy, I don't know if I can even scroll here. Overall, this PC is performing way below expectations. Out of 100 PCs with exactly the same components, 89 performed better. Probably because they had Windows XP on them or something. Uh, only 29% background CPU, that's pretty good. Da -da -da. The boot partition is located on a mechanical or hybrid drive. <laughs> uh, but we have the best version of Windows installed. Now when you try to use this thing, you'll quickly realize that, well, you can't. I had to disable a ton of stuff to get this to the point of being able to open any programs. Otherwise, Windows Update and a bunch of other background junk is constantly running, and because the hard drive is so slow, it renders the whole system useless. With those things disabled, I'm able to very, very slowly browse the web, but it's seriously slow. Like, you know, not even funny slow, just kind of painful slow. 
I wanted to try installing a program just to see how long that would take, so I installed VLC Media Player, which took about seven minutes. After that, I prepared a few simple test files, including an MP4, just to give you an idea of the joy that it is to use this system. First I did a PDF. Second, a simple JPEG image. And finally, an MP4 file. In 240p, of course, because that's pretty much all this thing can handle. I also ran Crystal Disk Mark on a few systems to give an idea of how slow the hard disk is. These are the results from the Acer, these are the results from a 7200 RPM hard disk, and these are the results from an SSD. So, I think you get the idea. It's slow. Now this video isn't really meant to poke fun at this old laptop. If anything, it should be a great credit to the legacy of older AMD hardware, and how they achieved many firsts in CPU technology back in the day including first to implement NXBit. To get an idea of how much the hard drive affects performance, I installed Linux Lite on an SSD to show what these components are really capable of. With Linux, I'm able to browse the web, watch YouTube videos, and get work done quickly. And don't you know, I can look at my Discord server as well. And you should too because there's a lot of great people there talking about old computers. I really like the scroll buttons on this laptop. Too bad Windows 10 didn't install drivers for this. Wish I could use my old scroll buttons, but... As well as for the built-in Wi-Fi card. On Windows I have to use a little Wi-Fi dongle, while Linux installed all these drivers automatically. So in the end, this video is just a simple little experiment that I wanted to carry out to see how Windows 10 handles really old and low-end components, and while nowhere near as good as Linux, it did install with little interruption and with most drivers. So there you go. If you enjoy seeing old laptops and operating systems, subscribe to the channel because I have plenty of those sorts of things. Thanks for watching and uh, stay safe out there.